What's up? It's Sly Gittins, technology consultant at Ingram Micro, and today we're going to be talking about Azure Active Directory Security Defaults. It's a free security tool that you might not know that you have in your M365 environments that you can turn on. I'm going to let you know when to use it, when not to use it, and let's get this started right now. So what is security defaults? Security defaults are pre-configured settings to help protect your organization from common attacks, such as password replays, password sprays, and phishing attacks. So it's a great place to start as a baseline security solution. So let's go and actually enable security defaults in your environment. First, I need you to go to aad.portal.azure.com. And then once you get here, I want you to go to Azure Active Directory, scroll down, go to Properties, and at the bottom of the Properties page, go to Manage Security Defaults. And then hit Yes, Enable Security Defaults, hit Save, and that's it. Security Defaults is enabled. It takes approximately, depending on your internet speed, it could be as low as 30 seconds, and as long as I've seen it is maybe a minute. Just sign out all your profiles, sign back in, and then you're going to be prompted to go through the MFA prompts to secure your um, identity. So when you get here, you have a few options. You can leverage Authenticate by phone or mobile app. So we're going to use to re receive notifications for verification. I'm going to hit next. It's going to ask me to scan this code. So I'm going to hit this plus sign on my phone, go to work and school account. I'm going to hit next on my phone. Hit next again. Now they're going to send it for a verification. So let me make sure I hit approve. And you can put a backup phone number if you like. So you can just add one in there and select your region. And now your account is protected with MFA. And all you had to do is select enable security defaults. Everyone in your organization will receive that same notification. Go into next, what other features that you receive by turning this on and the other features that you lose by turning on security defaults. When you activate security defaults, you gain a lot of good features. The first one is unified multi-factor authentication registration. So all users will go through the same process that I went through. And the great thing is it starts when the user takes their first authentication so if they out for 14 days and don't have a chance to go through the registration no worries because when they first activate they get 14 days from that time to go through the MFA to have it on their account next thing is um, it also protect administrators as well as all users so most of the time multi-factor authentication applied to admin accounts is not for the entire company Right, but a lot of our breaches start off by attacking the user and elevating those privileges. So another thing that Microsoft realizes an area of compromise is legacy authentication, such as older Windows clients that don't support MFA or other email clients such as IMAP, SNTP, or POT3 that they don't have MFA to give you that second layer of authentication to secure that account. The next thing is they also reduce privileged actions, right? So things such as Azure Resource, when you can make company-wide changes to your organization, they stop those from happening. What do you lose by activating? Or better yet, what don't you have access to when you enable security defaults? When security defaults enable, you no longer have the ability to create conditional access policies. So if you go to security, go to conditional access, and click on new policies, you'll see a message at the bottom that says it looks like you're about to manage your organization security configurations. That's great. You must first disable security defaults before enabling conditional access policy. So conditional access allows you to specify what user, which groups actually have this environment. So you can create emergency or break glass accounts to ensure that you don't get locked out in your environment. It also gives you access to block 
or grant users into your environment by using things as trusted location, trusted networks, right? Risk factors. So all these things you have more control of doing with conditional access. But that also requires you have a P1 or P2 license or a particular M365 license as well, right? But for those who don't have that, that might be okay, right? Because you don't have access to that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But for those who do or in more regulated environments that have particular security needs, you won't use security default. You'll probably use conditional access because, again, you get more control. But that also needs a level of security knowledge of M365. That's all for this video. If you like these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. All right, so you made it to the end of the video, but the fun doesn't stop here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and also watch the other videos below and share it with your friends. Let's go. Until next time.